During a profiling session, we can capture multiple snapshots of our application's memory usage over time. In this screencast, we'll see how we can compare snapshots and what information such a comparison may reveal. In the workspace here, we have several snapshots that have just been captured while our application was running. I've given them a more descriptive name to make it easier to recognize the action taken in the application while capturing the snapshots. Dot memory will automatically add the first two snapshots to the comparison. Of course, we can also manually select two snapshots we want to compare. We can also compare memory snapshots from different workspaces, which is really useful when we want to find out how particular code changes affect memory usage in our application. We could then compare a snapshot from before the change with a snapshot after the change. But let's compare snapshots in our current workspace and pick the two in the middle. The first one had a tool window of the type add window visible, the second one I'd expect it to be removed from memory. Let's select both and click the compare link here. In the comparison, we can see the differences between the selected snapshots. We can see the number of objects that survived, or in other words, are present in both snapshots. We can see the new objects, as well as the dead objects that no longer exist in the second snapshot. For all types, we can see the number of objects, as well as the number of bytes they took in memory. For example, between the two selected snapshots, almost two megabytes of memory have been allocated but also removed from memory. All types can be grouped by interface, so it's easier to go through them. We can also group by namespace, like so, and by assembly. In each of these views, we can expand nodes using the mouse or the arrow keys on our keyboards. Now let's return to the plain list again. We can filter objects by entering the type name. The search also supports camel humps, so when we look for AW, it will also find add window. Of the two snapshots we're comparing here, I would expect this add window to only be present in the first snapshots. However, we can clearly see it survive between the two snapshots. That's strange. This means for some reason the object was not removed from memory when I expected it to be removed. From here, we can dive into the object set and pick the snapshot we want to visualize. Let's open the newest one. The add window instance is clearly still in memory in the second snapshot. But why? An easy way to know is by using the shortest path to root. If we look at the tree here, we can see that our object is kept in memory by an event handler, which comes from a timer. This should give us a clue. We probably forgot to unsubscribe an event handler. To confirm our theory, we can also look at the key retention paths, where we again can see an event handler on the dispatcher timer class is keeping our window in memory. Oh, remember those common memory leaks we talked about in an earlier screencast? If we navigate back to the snapshot where we expected the add window to be gone, we can see under the event handler's leak section that our add window is held in memory because of an event handler. We now definitely know what to search for in our code to solve this memory leak. Thank you for watching! Check our website for more information.